from the Lakeside Newsroom of the Henrico Citizen. Your hometown news source since 2001. This is the Henrico News Minute with publisher Tom Lapis. Daycare at Henrico County Public Schools, it's in the works. And some good news from Henrico County's recently completed fiscal year 2020. We'll have details about those stories and more in today's Henrico News Minute for Wednesday, August 12, 2020. It's brought to you today by Nathan's Roof Repairs. And now for the news. Three nonprofit organizations are planning to turn as many as 16 or 17 Henrico County Public Schools into temporary child care centers once school begins in virtual mode September 8. The YMCA of Greater Richmond, the Henrico Police Athletic League, and the Henrico Education Foundation intend to offer full-day care during at least the first nine weeks of the school year when most public school students in the county will be learning on a fully virtual basis. Henrico's Board of Supervisors next month will consider allocating $2.5 million to help the organizations make those services available at a lower cost to families that need them. Henrico schools officials are partnering with the three organizations because each already has a presence in the public schools. The YMCA intends to offer its services at five schools initially with the possibility of expanding to more. Henrico PAL currently offers after-school programs at three elementary schools. It'll offer the full-day program at three as well, though it has not determined which ones yet. And the HEF currently operates its Community Learning Center program at Ratcliffe and Glen Lee Elementaries and Wilder Middle. It will offer a full-day program at one as yet unnamed location. Each organization intends to target its programs to Henrico employees and teachers, first responders, low-income families, and other working families that lack affordable daycare options. Funding from the county would come through the Federal CARES Act and could be allocated as part of a $17.6 million boost for the school system September 1st. If approved, the YMCA would use its portion of the $2.5 million to reduce the cost of weekly child care from $162 to $100 a week. It would also offer eligible families additional financial assistance based upon their income levels, up to 90% of the remaining costs, so that the lowest income families would pay just $10 a week. As rumors of schools being turned into makeshift daycares have circulated in recent weeks and other localities have moved forward with such plans, some in the community have questioned how those plans would be deemed acceptable while the school board has deemed it too dangerous for the same students to return to those same buildings for class. Brooklyn District Supervisor Dan Schmidt during a work session last night asked Henrico School Superintendent Amy Cashwell if the system would be evaluating the process to prepare for an eventual in-person return. Cashwell said, quote, there are lessons to be learned, absolutely, but to draw an apples-to-apples comparison, there's quite a difference, end quote. She said that's because while programs like the YMCA's may attract between 100 and 150 students per school, those students all will be kept in separate groups of no more than 13, and the Y will not provide any transportation or food service, whereas Henrico schools would have to prepare for twice or four times as many students to return, many of whom would need to be bused and fed by the school system. That would present a number of other unique challenges, according to Cashwell. You can read much more on this topic and coverage from last night's Board of Supervisors work session on HenricoCitizen.com right now. Well, some good news for Henrico County's economy, though County finance officials have not yet closed the book on fiscal year 2019-2020, which ended on June 30th. Their preliminary analysis shows that the county's financial downturn was not as severe as they had feared it could have been. In the spring, they estimated that in order to balance that budget, they'd have to dip into the county's fund balance, or surplus money, to take 40 to $60 million dollars. But in part because sales and meals tax revenues did not drop as far as expected, that number is expected to be closer to $25 million once the final calculations are in, according to Henrico Finance Director Megan Coates. Factor in Federal CARES Act money, which the county is using to cover a number of one-time expenses, and the number could shrink as low as $8 million or so, according to Coates. Even without COVID, officials were planning to dip into the surplus fund for about $25 million anyway in order to finish the new additions of Tucker and Highland Springs High School, she said. Officials had projected that sales tax revenues could fall by 25% or so, but they've ended up dropping only by about 8 to 15% month to month when compared with the 
totals from the same months last year. In May of 2019, for example, the county collected $5.9 million in sales tax, and this May it collected $5.1 million. That's a drop of just 13%. Coates theorized that once the pandemic hit, people began spending money at businesses closer to their homes. Meals tax revenues typically amount to about $2.8 million a month. They fell initially to just $900,000, but by May had rebounded to more than $2 million, Coates said. She attributed that to the quick response of many restaurants, which developed new ways to serve their food to customers. Another crucial factor in the county's ability to avoid significant financial strain has been the efforts of its agencies to cut spending. They spent about $17 million less than what Coates initially had projected they would need to spend even after the pandemic hit, she said. The combined result of those efforts and the better-than-expected revenues is that Henrico's fund balance will experience a minor blip, but the county's bond rating, essentially its creditworthiness, will not be affected. You can read much more about this topic on HenricoCitizen.com right now by clicking on Government. Henrico County's 7-day COVID-19 positivity percentage continues to rise. It hit 7.5% August 7th. That's the most recent day on record. A total of 44 new confirmed cases in the county were reported yesterday by the Virginia Department of Health. That brings the county's total to nearly 3,950. One new death of a person in his or her 70s was reported yesterday as well. The county has now witnessed more than 64,000 PCR tests, and just about 6.1% of them have returned positive results. The Henrico County Public School System has planned several more pop-up school supply drives in the coming days and weeks to assist students whose families may not be able to afford those supplies. One takes place today at Allen Family Dental on Laburnum Avenue in eastern Henrico from 1.30 to 3 p.m., And ongoing drives will be held every Tuesday and Thursday from 9 a.m. to noon at the Newbridge Learning Center on Nine Mile Road. Today's event will be a drive-through format. All the pop-up drives require social distancing and mask usage. They're sponsored by the School Systems Department of Family and Community Engagement. If you have questions, you can call 328-8110. If you want to know what some homes near you are selling for, In recent weeks, you can check out our weekly property transactions report. It's available right now on HenricoCitizen.com. Just click under News and then Property Transactions. Today's Henrico News Minute has been brought to you by Nathan's Roof Repairs, a small company doing big things. Check them out online at NathansRoofRepairs.com or call 273-9200 for a free estimate.